Hey, what's up, family? My name is Brian Mills, and I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel where we love to focus on our own financial and personal development. Now, family, I hope you guys are having a phenomenal start to your day. Now, one of the questions I'm often asked is centered around mutual funds and ETFs. What's the difference? Which one should I roll with? Well, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll have a better understanding of mutual funds and ETFs and which is best for you. All right, so let's get started. Now, when it comes to uh, mutual funds and ETFs, they both have professional management. So what does that mean? Well, each fund, whether it's an ETF fund, a uh, mutual fund or index fund, they have a fund manager. And this fund manager has a team of people that helps actively manage this fund. So each person in this team is given a certain particular uh, uh, section of stocks that they are responsible for. So they're gonna track the performance of the stock. They're gonna take a look at earnings reports. They're gonna read, um, you know, the what, what's the, the operating revenue the year over year growth they're going to take that they're going to do comparisons against his, their competitors and they're going to try to make sure that they have the best investments within that portfolio so they all equally do that diversification right again um, etfs mutual funds are pretty much a basket of stocks some uh some uh etfs or mutual funds can have 500 stocks within that fund or they can have 3,000 within that fund. It all depends on the particular type of fund that you decide to go with. Affordability. Now, when it comes to index funds, index funds, you may have to make a $5,000 minimum uh, deposit to start. Some of them may be $10,000 just to start investing in the index fund. All right, whereas mutual funds and ETFs, you can spend ten dollars you can spend twenty five dollars it doesn't matter there is no minimum when it comes to mutual funds and etf funds all right liquidity all right now when it comes to um you know cashing out it, it, it's it's just like selling any type of stock all right so there isn't a grace period you can sell it you know you can jump in there on monday you can cash out on friday it's very very liquid all right now what's the difference now, when it comes to mutual funds and ETFs, the major difference is the fees. Now, let's take a look at the fees. Now, an expense ratio is a fee that's charged to operate the fund. And mutual fund fees are up to 1.5%. Also, with the mutual fund, you can pay a marketing fee to help market this fund. You may have to pay an administrative fee. You may have to pay a transaction fee. So every transaction that takes place within your position is being charged. So every time you buy, you're going to pay a transaction fee. Also, a distribution charge. If you decide to cash out, you may have to pay that transaction fee and you may have to pay a distribution charge. And also, they have capital gains. Now, mutual funds, what they do is they roll that capital gains tax into the fund and they withdraw that capital uh, gains tax out to pay the, the IRS. All right. So that's a more money taken out of the fund. And also, there's a sales load fee. And we're going to talk about the sales load a little later. Now, let's take a look at the ETF fees. Now, expense ratio fee up to 0.05%. All right, so uh, mutual funds are charging almost up to three times the amount to manage the fund than ETFs. And also any additional fees. Now, ETFs are traded like stocks, so fees are typically brokerage fees. And now we all know that, you know, Robinhood changed the game when it came out. They created this app where you can buy and sell stocks for zero fees and uh you know they went from they went from uh you know a hundred thousand to a million users then td ameritrade and all the other brokers had to catch up so now um for from from i think from td ameritrade fidelity majority of them offer zero commissions to buy and sell 
which is a blessing to us. All right, that's a blessing to us. All right, so that's it. Expense ratio up to point uh, five zero five percent. Some funds, depending on how big they are, the expense ratio fee is even less, so they might be point zero three percent. All right, so that's pretty much all you're paying for ETFs. So when you take a look at mutual funds, all the fees add up. And there are some other fees that's not listed when it comes to mutual funds. Now, even a small difference in fees can mean large differences in returns over time. For example, if you invested $10,000 in a fund with the annual return and annual operating expenses of 1.5%, after 20 years, you would have roughly $49,725. If you invested $10,000 into a fund with a 10% annual return and the annual operating expenses 1.5%, after 20 years, you would have roughly $49,725. Let's take a look at ETFs. Now, if you would have invested that fund in an ETF with the same performance and the expenses of 0.5%, which is 10 times more than the, the previous slide, right? So let's just say it's 0.5%. After 20 years, you would end up with $60,858. Now, if you have an ETF that's 0.05%, that's 10 times less than, that's 10 times less expense ratio fees. So that balance would be much, much greater, okay? Now, that's a big difference when you're talking about saving and investing for your future. All right, now let's talk about this front end load. Now, sometimes when, uh, depending on the mutual fund, you may have to pay a fee right up front. So for example, if you write a check, a 10,000 check to a fund to purchase fund shares and the fund has a 5% front end sales load, the total amount of the sales load will be $500. The $500 sales load is deducted from your $10,000 check. So the remaining $9,500 is used to purchase your fund shares. So from day one, when you invest in this mutual fund and you start with $10,000, you are 5% in the hole. You are 5% in the hole starting out. So the mutual fund is getting their money up top, up front, regardless of the performance, mutual funds are gonna get their money, regardless of the performance. All right, so now, there you have it. When you take a look at all the fees and all the money that mutual funds are paying out versus the, the, versus the fees that ETFs are paying out, right? You can get the same basket of stocks, right? So, your choice. Which one do you think is better? My name is Brian Mills, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, if you did, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and keep coming back for more wealth building information. Peace.